So I've been playing a game called Fairy Fencer F Refrain Chord. In this game, your main goal is to try to find furies, which led to one of the weirdest interactions I've had with my wife. When she had called me on her way home from work, she asked, what are you doing? And I told her I'm trying to find furies. Then she showed up in a rabbit costume, which aside from learning that I have an open-minded wife, I also learned while playing this game, you want to make sure to always type in furies properly when Googling, because if you don't, you might end up on something that you didn't want to see. Or maybe you did. I don't know how you get down. Anyway, I'm Nima. Let's talk about Fairy Fencer F for Frame Court. As I mentioned in this game, your party is trying to find the aforementioned furies, which I have to admit I said furries because I thought that's how it's pronounced because I'm an idiot. But these furies are actually powerful weapons that are relics from a long battle between the goddess and the god. You play as Fang, a quick-witted smart aleck who is a master with the sword. Although your fairy, Eren, is pretty much the exact opposite of you. She has convinced you that you have to travel the world to find these furies. And over time, you develop a bigger party to help you along the way. Always claiming to be the leader of the group, you still respect and acknowledge everyone else's information and opinion. Your search for the Furies, though, is twofold. One, you're trying to resurrect the goddess, but two, you're trying to stop this evil company, this gigantic, overreaching, mega-rich company ran by incredibly evil people. Uh, think of like an Amazon, whose credits include killing, child torture, and trying to collect the Furies themselves to resurrect the vile god. So yeah, about as half as evil as Amazon. Now, one of the places that this game really shines is riding. You, see, you would like to just be able to ride off all your enemies as evil and complete lost causes, but that's not really the way these characters come off. They have a lot of complexity to them. There's layers into them. There's one moment in particular I can think of where both sides are fighting against each other and they've just been going on too long. Both parties are gassed and they essentially just have a conversation. There's this mutual respect for each other being warriors, and I think that adds this lifelike quality to the game. But it's not just that, it's the banter between you and your party. It's almost like they've all been friends for a long time, and you can feel that. It feels genuine when they're talking to each other. It's not all just about the mission or the game itself, it's just like conversations they have between each other, and I think that's a really nice touch to the game. Now as far as combat, the game's pretty traditional. It's a strategy RPG, which if you ask me, about two or three years ago, it felt like I couldn't find a strategy. GRPG, and now it feels like every game that's coming out is a strategy RPG, and that's a good thing, because they all bring something new or something different. And this game is no exception. It does that in different ways. For one, it really appreciates the role of the bard, or in this game they're called a muse, and they essentially will sing a song that has quite a large AoE, and you can expand it, or you can even intensify it. The negative aspect of it is the enemy has one as well. Now when you're in this field of effect, you're your attack power specifically seems to go up as well as other aspects as you move on with the game but starting off that is your main buff behind this and the th same thing happens to the enemy as well so when these two worlds collide it basically could come off as everyone is super powered as far as attack but not in defense so you have a war of like glass cannons now to be honest that rarely ever happens because these aren't up that long they're up for about three to four turns and typically the enemy is pretty aggressive, so I let them come to me and set up that field as where their actual muse never gets close enough for those two spells to merge. But there's also something called an avalanche, which is essentially the superpower that they all have when they combine their strengths together and do this massive damage, a lot of times taking out pretty much the entire enemy troop. You do have to wait for this to build up over time, but once it does, wow, you do some major damage. It's almost like if you could nuke the battlefield, and uh, honestly became one of my favorite things in the game. Just waiting for that to build up, trying to like pull the enemies all into the certain area where I could unload this massive attack on them. It was a lot of fun, but these are things that are not typical in strategy RPGs. Now, to be honest, they also don't have a lot of complexity and difficulty that I typically tend to like in these. You know, there's obviously aspects that are missing. Some that you won't find in like uh, Tactics Ogre or Triangle Strategy, games like that. But for what it is, it's very accessible and pretty cool. And I really respect them trying something new. And it really was quite enjoyable. The other aspect of this game that is so different is obviously the Furies, as these are things you can equip. 
and these are essential for getting through the game. Another really interesting aspect about the game, at a point in the story, you'll actually be able to kind of treasure hunt. You see, the entire map will kind of become a grid, and you'll have this sword that you can implant somewhere, and in there you can find anything from like new dungeons to treasures. You're able to do this uh, once, and then you have to let it refill, and it, it's sort of a little bit of a process. Sometimes you can do it twice in a row, but it's a cool little aspect that really added a lot and a lot of depth to the game that I didn't really expect to enjoy as much as I did, although it's really fun and helps you find more furies, which is going to help you become more powerful. Now, ultimately, I have to say that aside from the writing and even the combat itself, which I would say is, is really enjoyable, I say I love the character design. I really like the attention to detail that was put into these characters. I, I know I'm typically like that anime style, so if you don't like that, well, that might be an issue, but I really do like the look and personality of each character they just feel like individuals and it's not just the good guys either the bad guys are also in the same form now, as far as graphics and performance i really felt like this game looked and ran really well which is kind of an odd thing to say now but a lot of games don't seem to be done when they're released but this one definitely did and i have to say as well i'm going to show some video from the game but it's going to be early on in the game and also probably show video trailer but what i do want to mention is just how I never had any crashes. I never had any issues with like too much stuttering or lag. And there were times when there was a lot of things happening on the screen as far as combat and special moves and even like special like CGI scenes that it didn't seem to affect the game at all. In fact, it ran smooth. So in that regard on the Switch, it seems to run as well as it does like on the PS5. Now, obviously, it doesn't have the same resolution, but it actually still holds up, honestly. But it's not all sunshine and lollipops. There was a few negatives to me. Now, a slight one is the fact that at times the game can be kind of long-winded, and as much as I appreciate the writing and the banter and all of that, there were times when I just wanted them to get through their conversation so I could go explore more, so I could go fight more. The biggest negative for me, I think, is the music. It's like a pop rock type soundtrack that I would say is generic, to be honest. Like, I don't want to be too harsh on it, but it did sound kind of repetitive and without its own voice. It did in certain parts add to some of, you know, being pumped up and ready to go. At the same time, there were moments where it didn't really fit. To be honest, even that, it's not bad music. I, I want to be clear on that. I just feel like it was a little bit generic and maybe not always the right sound for the game. But ultimately, I found the entire game to be awesome. I really enjoyed myself with it, and I have to thank the publisher for a code to allow me to review it. I will say that if I was to give the game a number grade, I would definitely give it an 8 out of 10, really close to an 8.5, if I'm being honest. I, I enjoyed the game. I thought it played really well. The characters were relatable, yet defined enough to be characters, if that makes sense. But I don't know. I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are. Is this a game you've heard of? Is this a game you're thinking about purchasing? Anything and everything down below, let me know what you're playing right now. All of those comments, I truly appreciate. Thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. We're almost at a thousand subs, so let's keep pushing. We'll get there. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.